Good deal. Let's see if I can bring that up. Man, I wish I could see if there's any viewers. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, it's it's uh, it's catching up with us. I'll just let you guys stare at this for a little while until we get some viewers in here. And yeah, check that out. So this is a little lead coin, I guess you could call it, that we cast. And it came out so good. Check all this stuff out right here, all the detail that it picked up. That's actually machined into the the mold for the coin. Um, it had a little short fill there. Didn't put enough. I ran out of material on this one. I made like six or seven of these. And these will be my collector uh, metals when I do my smelting stuff experiments. So that's what we got here. Came out really good. Again, lead doesn't take very much heat to melt. You could do it on a stove, a hot stove or hot plate. Um, but we got a little mail call tonight. Boom. Check it out. And, uh, an unboxing of our devil's forge, which is over here to the right. Oops. Sorry. Camera. It's still over here this way. So you can't see that. Um, I don't see anyone in the, the lobby or anything like that, but, um, I'll go check that, make sure we're live and then we'll, uh, we'll unbox these guys. So if you're here right now, I appreciate you joining. If you're coming in and you don't see anyone, I'll be right back. Cat, will you stop hitting the table? You're shaking it. Okay, Cat. Cool. All right, cool. I just wanted to check to make sure our feed's good. I see a couple people are in the comments, so that's great. I'm not seeing anything yet, but it might take a second. So I saw Michigan in the house on my wife's phone, so. Oh, there we go. Anthony, what's up, man? Mark Miller. Ted, what's up? Digging, digging it. Hey, what's up? Sustainable Sleuth, how you doing, brother? All right. I think, uh, hey, Heavy Meadow, how's it going? Oh, Heavy Meadow, we got um, we got our 30-inch Royal Sluice. I got, oh, shit. I might as well go get it, huh? So, um, Sustainable Sleuth up there in the chat. Hey, what's up, Urban Dozer? I was just watching your video. Um, Sustainable Sleuth is going to be heading up north, and I got him a little sleuth to take, sleuth to take up with him. So, he's going to take this for a whirl and get us some gold. So, we got the 30-inch sleuth for him. That's Kyle. Um, and then we got a crucible. If you guys weren't here before, this is a, a lead coin that I cast, and uh, this will be what I use as my collector metal. Came out really good in my smelting, and I have like six six of these, and I just thought it'd be cool to have that in there for the video, like before I put any uh, flux or concentrates in there. Hey, Carl. Hey, Jose. Um, so that's that's the idea behind that. I thought it'd be kind of cool. Um, so we got that. I got a few cupels. And what the cupels will be for, to explain it to anyone who doesn't quite know, because I had to learn all this stuff myself. So you got your collector metal, your flux, and your concentrates. All the heavy metals, precious metals, and lead stick to the bottom in here. And what we'll do is we'll pour all of this out into a conical mold, let that cool, and at the very bottom we'll have a lead button. And all the lead will have, will have absorbed most of the precious metals so we could recover it from here. So we'll take our lead button that contains the precious metals and we need to oxidize this. And then we'll we use one of these guys to oxidize it. Now what this does is that it absorbs all the lead as it oxidizes. Sorry, I'm trying not to mess up my words here. And it soaks into the cupel. And the gold, the precious metal, gold or silver, 
whatever um because most likely it's not pure co uh, gold it might have some silver in it or it might be more silver dominant depending on your ore uh, but this will be soaked into the cupel and the precious metal will be left like a little round button hopefully if we did everything right right in the center then eventually when we get down you know next year or hopefully by this year we'll we'll take those lead buttons or excuse me those gold buttons and we're going to do some aqua regia experiments with those and turn it from an impure gold into a 24 or 23.5 carat gold you know button that's what we'll do with those with the waste material the liquid from the aqua regia experiments will generate um silver and uh, that'll be a silver nitrate um, in solution and will precipitate uh, the silver out in silver chloride and then melt that down and get a, a silver button from that. So a lot of fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, a lot of fun stuff. Um, so it's a lot of fun. <laughs> the vendetta lead, right? Yeah, I know. It's cool. I was like, I wonder if the post office would, is, is that falls under their dangerous substances because <laughs> uh they're really easy to make and super cheap i'd love I, I wouldn't mind like the copper ones are easy to make and they're cheap but the metal is hard to get and stay hot but we solved that with that guy right there from uh Lith lithuania yeah my phone number's right there that's on my website if you guys need it or i i don't i don't mind you guys having it so i don't care uh you can call me <laughs> a, a vendetta lead button in every bag that's a winner um yeah uh thankfully i have an llc so you guys can't sue me when you get lead poisoning um <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> just kidding our water's already polluted so that's that um so let's move on to what else we got we got a crevice tool so we can work some of these crevices that kyle and i have been kind of seeing and wanting to get in but this this is really going to help us get in there and I got a little handle for it so we don't break our hands on it and this is kind of like a little digger at it so this will be a little good crevice tool we've got plenty of pry bars and hammers and stuff like that but we're not in California and I didn't really ever think I'd need one of these but I do for sure um because in California they got big boulders and big rocks and so do we you know everywhere has the same stuff I feel like I got something else but I don't know where it is so I don't that's pretty much it uh heavy meadow Okay, digging. Uh, feel yeah. By all means, by all means, yeah. We could brand cows, uh, Jose. That'd be fun. Uh, there's a lot of wild cow out uh, in Arizona. We could go make our mark. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel better with lead in my feet. I like lead in my coffee. Me too. All right. Excuse me for that. I apologize. So I said I was going to do a mail call. Um, I've kind of backed up. I've had a lot of stuff coming and going and I've been slacking on shouting out people and I'm really sorry about that. Um, but Hey, what's up 48th? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> a day and a half. Well, you know, uh, uh, I'm trying to work my way into making it a day and a half. I I'm trying to do as much as possible to get out as long as possible, but shh. <laughs> Ooh, dig in. Now you're talking, dude. I like that. I like that. I forgot I could do this. I like that. Um, you know what? We should probably make a shit bag, shouldn't we? Like a Mike Vendetta, you're full of shit bag. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Oh, no, Ted. Oh, that's bad. All right. So a couple things here. A little mail call. Um. I got this when I was saying in the video earlier, I got this from HD Shovel Ed. Um, I said, I was like, I don't know what, I don't know what this is for. I don't think I got anything, but I did. I, I got the MNP, MHP auction, Mad Hatter prospecting auction. I bought this uh, one Troy ounce silver round, 999. Um, it's like Medusa kind of. It's really pretty. It looks way better in person. Um, I've never actually bought in like, like this is the first uh coin i bought in like this i've never never bought anything like that and i also got this benji i actually i was gonna stay out of like the the bidding got beyond where i wanted but then he he threw this in there and i was like oh i gotta have that this is why i wanted to buy it i didn't care about this um 
this is awesome. It's a half dollar, uh, 1958 Benj Benjamin. And uh, I just love American history. And um, this is something that I will keep probably for the rest of my life. So that's why I got it. And this, this sticker, if anyone's gotten it, it is so cool. Like it says HD and then shovel ed in the mi middle. Uh, so big shout out to HD shovel ed. Thank you so much for that. I love that sticker. The holographic ones just look awesome. Uh, we got a package from Cherie Ward. Uh, we did a sticker trade with her and there's something else in here. So I'm going to see what's in here before i show youtube just in case there's something i shouldn't show um but i doubt it um i usually have my stuff open beforehand but eh, why why do it this time gotta mix it up and keep things different once in a while right live a little you only get a little lead in your body if you mess up once or twice right <laughs> What's what's up with the fifty five Benji Carl? What's is that the first year they did it? Oh, I did. Really? What what did he have to say, Heavy? I mean, you don't have to go into detail, but uh, that's really cool. Benzo's a great guy. Oh, okay. I, I think I can show you guys this stuff here. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So we got her channel stickers. Oh, she's got a holographic one too. That is dope. I love her little raccoon holding that coin. That is so cool. <laughs> uh, and she's got a little little autograph on there. So thank you, sweetie. It says, uh, hello, Vendetta Prospecting. Thank you so much for doing the sticker trade with me. Truly appreciate y'all and enjoy your gold adventures. Thank you for sharing them with us. Best wishes, Cherie Ward. She's kicking butt. And there's something else in here. She's got all kinds of stickers, man. She has fun doing this. You can tell. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, okay, Carl. Okay, I got you. Oh, wow. She freaking sent me some coins. What? So she sent me a Mercury Dime. 1943 Mercury Dime. Nice. That's in really good shape on the back. That's awesome. Let's show off there. And then uh, this is a Buffalo Nickel. I haven't seen one of these in forever. A 1936. Wow, that is old. Wow. That is just fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and we got the uh we got the the card too on top of it, the Schultz. It's funny, the year we got a whole pack of these cards, I think, one one year at a big box store. And I think we got like three or four of these from family members. It was so funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that was Sheree Ward. Thank you so much. She's up in Michigan, probably freezing her buns off right now, but hopefully you're warm. Uh, and then we got two more things to open up. Actually three, let me show you guys this real quick. So I got this box here. I'm gonna swing you guys over here. Well, I know they're at least worth 10 cents, um, but I think they're like 40%. So uh, I don't know. They're worth probably like five bucks, uh, Urban Dozer. But I, I mean, the historical value is probably worth more than that. So I got this huge box and it's like sealed air and it's really light. I'm like, dude, I don't know what this is. I didn't, I don't order anything from FedEx. I'm like, it's, it's light, it's big. It's my padded flat rate envelopes. I can't ever get enough of these things. So I finally ordered like a double order of what I normally get. And here they are. <laughs> so that was a big surprise. Oh, uh, that's funny. Um, hey, Jose, you know how to fix that, buddy? Do a uh, paperless. <laughs> oh, man, I crack jokes, right? Uh, sorry. <laughs> I like to joke, guys, if you haven't noticed. I'm not trying to bag on you. I just like to make jokes. Uh, sustainable Sleuth would be the first to tell you that. Um, all right. So we're going to move on here. Last uh, mail call is going to be Indiana Creek Prospecting and Paydirts. Uh, Brian over there donated 
um, a bunch of coins. We got mercury dimes, an old, old nickel. Um, what is that? Uh, 54 quarter, silver quarter, and then a bunch of wheat pennies. Um, so we got a bunch of those and a, a one ounce copper round, 999, three nines. Uh, American buffalo, or excuse me, bison. Uh, and that'll go as a giveaway gift. So he donated that. Okay, Mercury Dime is 90% silver. Cool, that's awesome to know. Yeah, so USPS ships me all those those, those packaging. That's free. <laughs> so um, even like the flat rate boxes and the medium size boxes and all that, those are all free. Um, so thankfully I, uh, I get to get all that. Because otherwise, packaging would be killer. I would have to be sending you guys packages and like rolled up, rolled up cardboard bags and stuff like trash. He also Brian over there is just such a he's such a good guy. He just sent me his sluicing cons from last season. He he had uh, sent me he sent me half of them, and I was like, wow, man, that that's really nice. Um, so hey, Jeff, you made it. That's awesome. Uh, so you know. Half of his sluicing cons, that's that's got to be huge. He's like, go through them, check it out. I wanted you to get a real experience of Indiana and see see what I'm up against. And him and I kind of talked about some history over in Indiana and in that area. And I just kind of wish I got to explore that part of the country more when I was younger. Um, I got to see it, but I didn't get to really explore it a lot. So, you know, hopefully with our kids and, and our family, we'll get to do that. And, you know, eventually I'll be able to experience those things with my family. That would be awesome. So, without further ado, so thank you everyone, Sherry Ward, uh, HD Shovel Ed, Indiana Creek Prospecting and Pater, it's Brian over there, and B Prospecting over in Mesa, those guys are awesome, and USPS for all the boxes, we love it, thank you so much. Um, last but not least, the creme de la creme, the beast. Look at this. There's the kitty. Mister. No. <laughs> I got to get the phone charger, guys. My phone's on 10%. So uh, bear with me here. Got to do a safe check. Make sure all of our uh, boxes are aligned right. We don't want to have any of this tape come and hit us in the face. You know. One second. Got the power cord. We're back in action. When I was uh, leaving the A&B prospecting store, or going into it, and pulling the phone out of the car, I ripped the charger out of it and snapped the little uh, lightning attachment for my wife's charger in the van. Whoops. A vendetta versus Black Mass Pater. Well, I mean, Carl, you never know, man. Black Mass has some good pay dirts. He doesn't have five and ten gram bags, and he doesn't have ounce bags. So, you know, those ROIs would be hard to compete against, but his one gram bag, he might beat me, but uh, you never know. So, uh, he's got good dirt, and he's been uh, really – I saw some videos of when he was down in that uh, creek, and that was really good-looking ground. So he's probably on some really good stuff. So, oh. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading chat. So uh, yeah, it's it's very well possible. Uh, but yeah, it would be cool to see. It would be cool to see like one of the uh, one of the big guys do a, a, a challenge with that because they would get two bags, um, you know, randomly, like through eBay or through his our websites or whatever, and then uh, and then um, they could review them at the same time and compare the cost and the ROI. That would be cool. That would be like an impartial battle royale unbiased i mean sorry i'm trying to adjust the camera here but you know what everyone's got good pater uh that is like part of this community so it's it would be really hard because they all have different different features like some have guaranteed amounts and some are just like more about the experience experience um 
I did some pay dirt recently. I'm not going to name any names, but the one I did last week for uh, for that review, that was killer pay dirt. Um, that was probably some of my favorite, I'd have to say. Um, yeah, even some, some better than some of mine, which I have no problem saying because it is. <laughs> so um, I have different pay dirts, like the Hacienda is the easiest pay dirt to go through. There's not a lot of black sands. Um, it's mostly kind of rough sand, um, and there's some rocks in there. Um, the Lynx Creek has a lot of organics, a lot of black sands, so that's a little a little more difficult, but if you clean it off, it's not that bad, I don't think. Um, the North Lynx is pretty nasty. Uh, the Jimmy's Secret Spot, number one, is muddy, but once you clean the mud off, it has some black sands, which is good, but it has so much natural gold in that dirt um, that, I mean, um, one of our fellow members made a video recently, and they, they had some some good feedback on it. So I've sent a few bags out there unseated, um, wanted to get some feedback on it because uh, it's really good ground. And I just like people to see what it's like to have some real pay dirt without gold added. Um, I don't really like selling that to people because then they feel like they might get ripped off because I don't want to be like guaranteed gold. And then there's you know, that much gold in it. Um, but I'd like to at least give them the experience. It's seven bucks, eight bucks for me to send it to them. I don't care. Um, it, it's just, it's so fun to share that with people. And this is like a totally, like, this is new to me as far as recovering uh, the, the kind of gold from that area in Jimmy's Secret Spot. Um, because it's it's an ancient riverbed that is hard packed. There's uh, about two feet of overburden. And it's just such a good pay layer. Like, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> so um, it, it's just, it gets you that fever. Um, and it's a fun spot. So um, obviously, I'm kind of hyped about it, as you can tell. But um, but anyways, let's get back into opening this bad boy. We got the Devil's Forge. Oh, sweet. What's up, HD? How you doing, man? Yeah. Yeah, that number two is going to be killer. Hey, HD, I was talking about you earlier. Thank you. Thank you so much. This coin is awesome. I really, 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 really appreciate this. This coin is great. Thank you. Yeah, I've done a few. Uh, I've done a few black mass bags. They're every time they're good. There's all kinds of different size of gold. There's black sands. Um, the the pay itself is good. So um, when I did that uh, Saturday sluicing episode, that was a lot of fun. I asked him to send me three bags, um, but one with gold in it, and then the rest just to add up bulk. So that was a lot of fun um, to be able to run that through the sluice because I didn't want to really waste one bag on a sluice. See you, HD. Thanks. All right. So let us get into it. This is a little bit of the wool, and this will be the extra that we'll use to I'll, – I'll explain it later. Some of you guys probably don't know. So there's a lot of little parts to this. Even most of this stuff I don't know, too, so I'm going to be learning along with you. I'm going to make a whole video on putting this together, um, painting the wool, curing it. I'm just going to open this tonight. I'm not set up or ready to do anything besides that. There's no heat going into this tonight. I'm sorry, <laughs> but we're just unboxing it. So there's our devil's forge. I think this is the three or four kilogram one. I don't need bigger than that. There it is. Bam. But I will unwrap this because it is sweet. Let's see. Some more bubble wrap goodies. We got our air nozzle. And some more. Oh, so this is our this is our uh, uh, powder that we're going to cure up the, fur uh, the furnace with. We'll mix this into like a paste, paint it on with the included paintbrush. And um, it'll basically hard like form a hard shell around the wool. And that'll keep that intact for a long time. And then when that gets all burnt up and burnt out, you just replace it and re cure it up. By the way, this shipped to me in less than a week when I, from when I bought it, which was amazing. Here is the airline. There's a lot of little, there's a lot of stuff in this. Thing. And I think that's it. The manual, pretty easy. Card. 
Um, so let's open this bad boy up and then we'll kind of talk about it a little bit. This is the fire brick. Oh, that sound puts me to sleep. Squeaky stretch wrap. Reminds me of being at work, actually. Hearing that in the warehouse all day. Kids getting wrapped up and stuff getting ready to ship. Whoa, easy there, Haas. So the reason why I went with uh, Devil's Forge versus the melting furnace is... I'm going to be using it a lot, number one. Number two, this is more geared towards um, precious metal recovery rather than just um, like jewelry making or ingot making or anything like that. We're going to do a lot of smelting. Uh, we're going to do a lot of reduction of um, concentrates or crushed ores, and we're going to try to pull these precious metals out of, out of those bodies. So we're going to need something that can handle that. I don't need 10 kilograms at a time. I don't have that kind of scale. I don't have those kinds of tools. Um, so we're going to work with what we've got. And that's, you know, this size, a little bit bigger. I have a, a graphite one coming in next week. Um, that, that'll be a Procast one. Um, that'll be our, our main production crucible for a while. But, you know, this size is good for us. We don't need more than that. Um, this can hold, I think this is a... 500 gram crucible or 300 gram. I can't remember. It wasn't marked right at the store. Um, so that's what that is. Let me show you the fire brick. Anthony, yeah, it does. Oh, <laughs> I still haven't, dude, I, HD, I still haven't bought the Mad Dog number nine, but I'm going to buy that and I'm going to send us all uh, toothpicks, okay? And we're all going to do it one night. Not me. I can't. I can't. My body won't let me. <laughs> I've already done it, okay? I have photographic evidence that I've done it. Um, but you guys got to do that live because <laughs> it's just so bad. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, so this is our fire brick. I'm not going to put it in there because I want to paint our 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 uh, material in here. Um, but this goes down in there, and it's chamfered on the end, so it fits nice, just right. And this is our material for uh, refractory coating rigidizer. Ceramic fiber blanket, 300 grams. All right, so this upgrades your ceramic insulation with protective coating that will provide extra strong protection and will, will increase the durability for ceramic insulation. All right, so you mix this proportionally with water. It tells you how much. Um, let it sit and stir for 15 minutes. Uh, make sure it's smooth. Paint it on. Uh, it says, after coating, wait one day before using the fur furnace. So... This is obviously not something you just get right into if you want it to work for a while. Um, otherwise, I mean, you could could do it a little bit later. Wait, dig... Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, preparation, that's the thing. It, preparation is like, what, 90% of everything, and then you just need to execute? I don't know if that's football or military or just common sense, but if you prepare your mind and, and your supplies and everything right before you do something, which trust me, I'd be the first person to be a hypocrite and say, I do that every time because I don't. <laughs> um, but you know, if you do, if you, if you do that, um, you're setting yourself up for success uh, with the best odds of, of getting to that goal. Um, so I don't need to open this. This is a gas line for the propane. This is the regulator for that. So normal gas without a regulator would come out at a specific atmosphere pressure based on whatever the, the plumbing fittings would be basically without a regulator. What this regulator does, I think this is just a bunch of adapters for it. What this regulator does 
Oh, he, man, he's even got his little sticker right there. That's cute. Um, it allows me to control or, ver you know, variable speed, basically, the amount of gas and air mixture coming in here to make it hotter or colder. Um, so hotter or cooler. Um, so this is a key instrument in the foundry process, which the electric does not have. It has a maximum temperature of 1150C, 1200C, whatever it is. And this can get a lot hotter and uh, it could get a lot hotter faster too. So we're looking at 10 minute melt times with copper in here, 10 to 12 minute, I think I saw a guy do on YouTube. Um, big, big amounts of copper. Um, and it just, it goes like that. So that's what we're after. I don't need, I, I can't sit around for an hour every time I pour a coin waiting for the thing to heat up um, to make another one. It, this is a really big tool as well for the forge. This is basically in the into the furnace where the air and gas mixture comes in and it also has a wing nut and a little disc on the back to help you control the flow and when you start it you don't let any air in and then when you're ready to get it hot basically once your face is out of there you turn it up right that's what all this action is back here this is very very vital for this machine's function back here this lets, oh, wait, what? Is it just tight? Yeah, it's just tight. Okay, I was like, what? Did they change it? This lets more or less air in at the back and blasts it through here into the furnace, which will then, let's see. Right? Do you guys get it? I think it makes sense, right? So we've got this going in like here. We've got heat flowing coming up through the center. And this will all be sealed off in that hole with the extra material they sent us. So we get a nice tight seal around this mating surface. Yep, thank you, 48. No, Jose, uh, this I ordered. Yeah, thank you. You got it. Um, so that's all set. I'm just really excited. This is like a fun little project. It's like a craft project. And then uh, once we actually get to use it, it's more of a industrial thing for me. Um, so I'm really excited to get into that. I've seen a lot of videos and wanting this for a long time. Even before, before I got that electric one, I was like, man, I should just go for this. But I didn't have the gumption to do it at the time, but whatever. <laughs> oh, you guys are having fun. Huh? I like it. Uh, good, good, good. So um, let's drop you guys down here and get you a nice shot of the label on the forge. Bam. That just looks so nice, doesn't it? So, oh, Chris, Chris is in the house. Oh, Chris, I didn't see you. Yeah, we picked up a crevicing tool, a handle. We got Kyle over there at Sustainable Sleuth, a Royal 30-inch sleuth. He's going to take that up with us. We'll be double sluicing. And we got a nice big mail call tonight. So, <clears throat> you guys got any questions? Here, I'm going to flip the camera around. Oops, that just turned the camera off. Hold on one second, guys. You guys want to see some gold? You guys want to see some gold nuggets? Hey, Bob, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining in. Glad to see you here. You guys want to see some gold nuggets? 
small ones that are going in pay dirt right now. I can I can go grab some of those. It's only a thir it's only been thirty minutes. My most of my streams are like an hour or forty minutes at least. So we gotta we gotta fill a little bit of time there, right? All right, all right, Ted. I just needed one yes. That does it for me. I'll be right back. Can you hear that from over here? Yeah, you can hear that. Those are heavy ones, huh? Yeah, those are heavy. Yeah. Hold on one second. I'm gonna clean up this area and then uh, I'll get the shot back on to <laughs> our glory shot because it actually looks really cool on the table right now. If someone could uh, do a snapshot of the table when I turn the camera here and send it to me, I'd really appreciate it because it looks Pretty freaking cool if you had that, if I had to say anything about it. But if not, no worries. I'll go back and do it. I don't, I, I don't really know how to do that on live myself. Check it out. Yeah. 48. Please. We need triple sluicing. Oh, Carl, good. Yeah, I think if I remember right, that nugget was 5.566 grams or 0.565 grams. I can't remember exactly. I can't remember exactly. But I wanted to get you a bigger nugget, but uh, you wouldn't have had much more gold in there, so I wanted you to have some more gold to get. <laughs> it felt kind of bad. <laughs> so it's kind of a fine dance of getting you a nice nugget and having more... more uh, What's the half grader? Half grammar, he, he meant to say. Oh, thanks, 48. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, th he meant uh, half grammar. Carl got a custom bag um, from Vendetta Prospecting. Um, we gave him some chunky gold in his pay dirt bag, and he wanted to get his first, first big nugget, so we hooked him up with that. I was glad to be able to do that for him. All right. Check out some of these little nugs that we got going into some dirt. This is just all plus, uh, well, it's like, I think it's plus quarter inch minus, no, no, plus eighth inch, eight, yeah, minus quarter inch nuggets. Because some of them are skinny and they're getting through the, the meshes. But, but like, this is not, that's not a small nugget by any standard. Okay, we got, that one's pretty looking. It's got some character. This one's not really attractive, but it's a thicken. It looks like it's been folded over right there, which I I, I always like, uh, once in a while I'll have a nugget that I like and then I'll keep, I'll open it up and see what it looks like inside. And usually it's really cool, but this one looks like it's like welded up here. So it wouldn't be a good one for that. Look at that. Yeah, I did uh, Urban Dozer, but I haven't got a chance. <laughs> 4.8 grams. <laughs> thought it was 4.2. <laughs> no, these are all uh, minus, less than less than two uh, less than three grams. These nuggets here. That one's really cool. Got a lot of character on it. Look at that. get some more and then we'll just kind of do that with the rest of them but what do you guys think those are pretty right they're very very bright yellow later hd see you bud <laughs> you guys are killing me <laughs> oh, okay someone got the weight exactly right you get a hundred dollars <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> you guys are killing me, man. Um, 
but yeah, that, that's some of the bigger gold that we're putting in some of the bags right now. Um, we have all kinds of other sizes, but uh, that's what we got for the nice big, big stuff. Kind of hard to come by, but uh, we've got we've got stock, so keeps us busy. <laughs> Charles, <laughs> that's funny. Dowsing stick. Oh yeah. Oh man. Um, I uh, did you guys see? Hold on. Do you guys see uh, Gold Bay? He he put up. <laughs> so he put up that video about the dowsing rods that first day, and um, I, was, I even watched it. I was like. 50 grand. And then some people were talking about it in a chat uh, later that night and kind of explained it more than exactly how I thought it was working. Um, so I was like, Oh, okay. Dowsing rods. Okay. That's, you have to prove that you can find gold with dowsing rods. Like that's going to be really, really hard. Um, but I mean, there would be ways around it and other, other things. That's what we were talking about in, in the chat. Um, so the next day he, he, or the next day or the next very other next day, he made a video defining and explaining some of the rules uh and it, it ended up being something like you have to pick one out of ten boxes and repeat it and like give some reasoning and like how you knew it was that one and not like if you mess up once it's it's over like the dowsing rods don't work um so you know the, the odds of you doing that aren't very good but they're probably better than actually finding gold with dowsing rods um so i don't know um, but I was also watching cause that made me do a little bit of research into dowsing rods. And, uh, I was watching some old Australian guys that were looking for water and they were using dowsing rods. And, uh, I had some old family members in New Mexico. Uh, they lived out in New Mexico. Um, this was when I was younger. I don't think they're around anymore. If they are, they don't do what they did before. Uh, but they used to be well, well diggers. Um, he had all kinds of drills and it was a kind of a one man operation. They lived out in the middle of nowhere and had, you know, a tour bus. And um, during the summertime, they go to Laughlin and they sing on the riverboat. And that's what they did every year. Um, so if you guys ever got sung by a couple that had white hair and a hat, that's probably my family. Um, but uh, they, they, they probably used some sort of technology that was primitive back in the day before they had uh, surveyors and 3d you know lidar that was getting ground penetrating and things like that that they have now um but you know even for fault lines and they're looking for all kinds of ground uh, variations using these dowsing rods and every time i see these guys walk around they're like this and then when they move they go like this so like what are you doing <laughs> um so I, I don't know uh, the dowsing rods is interesting, but um, I also saw this guy who had a cherry branch. I don't know if you guys have seen this, and it was bent weird. And when he would walk, this looked more real than the dowsing rods. When he'd, when he'd walk, it would pop. They would, like, snap up a certain way, the cherry branch. And they were looking for water on their property, and they ended up finding it that way. Um, I'm not saying I believe in it or anything, but even, like, his wife and kids were doing it, and... I don't know if they were even strong enough to create the reaction that that stick were, were having. So um, that was kind of interesting, but that's enough of me blabbering and going on. Hey, Wisconsin gold chopsticks. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, man. Well, I've got some of those. Should I be bringing those out? Or is that just for like eating when you, you realize that you're like at lunch when you're looking for, for gold with your dowsing rods and you're like, you're like, Oh, I found it. I found the gold. And the guy's just eating his sandwich. And he's like, no, just, just move on. Let's, let's just go. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's funny. Green Willow, you've seen it done to get water. Yeah. So I don't know, man. Like I, the, the old, the old timers in, in, all kinds of different um, prospecting, you know, water prospecting. That's something they're looking for. Um, you're going to drill down and get a well. Um, they used to use it. So I don't know if there's something to it or if it was just straight luck or there's some sort of divine intervention going on. Who knows? Um, but, you know, those are all the kinds of answers that you find out later on in life when you're not around anymore. Right. It's pretty cool stuff. 
Um, but I just love like the history about learning about things like that. And that's how you kind of get in like these holes of, of educating yourself is like, you know, you went from Gold Bay offering $50,000 to find some gold using some dowsing rods to, to learning about how the history of dowsing rods. And then you get into this whole thing about water mining, you know, it just, it just leads you down a bunch of, you know, interesting things. So I find it very fascinating, uh, regardless if it works or not, <laughs> they're still doing it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kitty wants to say hi. Say hi, Kitty. This is Mr. Kitty. He is, how old are you, buddy? He was born in like 2007. So 14 years, going on 14 years old. He's a good boy. He's a big boy. Huh. Yeah. He's got a little sister named Bella or Minnie or bitch because she's a bitch. Oh, man. <laughs> Do it. Dig in. Harbor Freight had a sale on um, the titanium model. I bought, we got two of them at our shop because uh, I think they were like 600 bucks, I want to say. Six or 700 bucks. Um, but yeah, definitely go get it if you can. Oh no, Chris. Yeah, the titanium ones and they work really good. We got we got the titanium welding machines and we got a plasma cutter to cut metal at us at the shop instead of using our CNC's and saws and, you know, stuff like that and dude, that that thing rips, man. It is bad ass. I mean, we're talking quarter inch steel that it just doesn't even wink an eye. It just just cuts right through it. Um, so we cut up a couple of, we cut up a couple of, what were they? Connex boxes um, to install some doors. And man, that was just like a breeze. I hope this is the right size. I think it, I think it is. Probably not. Probably not. But I'm uh, I'm super excited to uh, to get out this weekend. Um, I'm gonna have a lot of fun. Make a lot of videos. I'm probably gonna make. Oh man, I wish I could get a Siamese cat so bad. Um, I think. <laughs> I think I'm gonna make a movie. Uh, for our next uh, episode of prospecting out with us um i want to make like an hour hour 20 minute long prospecting video because there's not a whole lot of those out there there's some good ones like california guys because they can they can really put it together out there in the desert it's a little harder uh, but we're going to be up in the forest so we should be able to put some really good footage together for you guys um and <laughs> and uh um, have some fun and hopefully recover quite a bit of gold. Um, oh, I could, uh, I think we got, so we ran the sluice at Jimmy's secret spot and we got, it was like 0.18. It was like about 20 minutes of sluicing. It was not very long. Um, so I'm going to try to put a goal of getting a gram while we're out there. And if we get a gram total between the two of us, um, I'm going to be hyped, man. That would be so cool to be able to pull that off. Um, and, and be able to like show you guys the process of doing that and, and achieving that goal. I think that's a pretty attainable goal. Um, oh yes. You need to get a camera harness dude for Raiden. That would be sick. Yes. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think that's an attainable goal. We can, if we work hard enough and smart enough, we don't have to overexert ourselves and waste our energy. We just have to focus on the right areas. And, uh, and I think we could do that. So I think that's enough of me blabbering on tonight. I'm going to get inside and get ready for bed and uh, watch some Breaking Bad because we started that over and I think I'm missing some episode. So I really do appreciate you guys uh, being around tonight. Uh, the metal detector, yes, uh, of course. Uh, oh, damn, Chris. 
Uh, yeah, I will be. Hey, Kaylee, how's it going? Thanks for coming in. Um, I'm going to be taking the gold monster out there. I'm going to be putting the five inch head back on. Um, the 10 inch head was different for sure. Um, but it's not good for the ground that we're working. So if I'm going to be doing big swings and stuff like that, I think I'll be using that, um, out in the desert more. And I think I'll be using the five inch more for pinpointing, but good night, you guys. Thank you so much for coming in, sticking around with me. It's been almost an hour. Um, so thank you so much guys and, uh, have a good night.